So I'm very pleased to uh, uh, present uh, uh, today to share with you the results of our second edition of the European Green Deal Barometer, which has been done uh, with the support of uh, Globescan, which is here in the room. So if there are questions on the methodology, uh, they can also step in and uh, answer these questions either during the uh, discussion or in the breakout. Um, so let's uh, yes, let's see actually uh, whether the experts that we have interviewed uh, in April uh, share the optimism that uh, Diedrich Samson uh, uh, just presented uh, to us today. So what is our European Green Deal Barometer? So it's an annual product that uh, aims at ident identifying the challenges and the opportunities to the European Green Deal implementation and also on the basis of that provides policy recommendations for decision makers to actually improve the implementation of the European Green Deal. It is based on a survey of more than 300 sustainability experts across the EU, so 314 <clears throat> in total. The second edition, so because we had an edition last year, and actually the, the aim also of the barometer is, of course, to compare the, edition, the results year after year. So the second edition has a special focus this year on the action needed by the uh, trio presidency all the way to 2024, the European elections. Um, and we have also another focus, of course, which is the impact uh, uh, of the war uh, in Ukraine on the implementation of the European uh, uh, Green Deal. So we also had this year a special dive into uh, national uh, cases, so for the coming presidency, so for French also, which is just finishing, Czechia, uh, Sweden and Spain. But this is not what I'm going to present today. I will stick to the macro results and the uh, uh, results uh, about the national case studies will be part of the report in the autumn. So stay tuned. Um, so just a few words on the methodology to, uh, to start with. So what is the stakeholder uh, sample here? As you can see, a strong majority of the respondents uh, come from Europe. So 95% actually of the re respondents are European experts. Just a few uh, come from outside of Europe. And actually the uh, largest sample comes from Western Europe, which is followed by Southern Europe. So what is the stakeholder types that responded to the, uh, to the barometer this year? So like last year, it's mostly, mostly academia and think tanks. And uh, what we have seen as well is an increase in the participation of corporate, industry, and of NGOs this year in comparison with last year's edition. What I would like to say also, uh, which I think is important, um, is that the level of familiarity with the Green Deal has increased quite a lot in comparison with last year's survey. Last year, only less than half, actually, of the respondents described themselves as familiar with the European Green Deal, which was a problem in itself. But this year, 72% of the respondents are actually qualifying themselves as familiar with the European Green Deal. It's most likely also because the Green Deal has moved from a political project to actual piece of legislation and that it's going through co-decision. But this is a positive outcome in itself. Um, so one of the most striking highlights, which is not that positive, and actually this is maybe where I can see that the experts are not as optimistic as uh, Didrik Samson, uh, the skepticism regarding the European Green Deal uh, implementation uh, has increased since last year. We've moved from 30% to 45% of the respondents who actually think it's unlikely that the Green Deal will be implemented by 2024. And by implemented here, we mean that it is uh, translated from a political project to uh, science-based targets, to uh, legislative proposals, uh, to uh, co-decision uh, agreements, etc. So not that it is implemented on the ground, because of course that takes time. But uh, it is quite striking to see that actually the level of skepticism has increased uh, in comparison with last year and quite, uh, quite uh, significantly. And where has this skepticism uh, increased the most? Well, actually it increased in every region, as you can see, but in particular it has doubled in Western Europe. So that's an interesting uh, outcome. And it is very high, surprisingly, uh, in Northern Europe. It's actually rating at 60% of the respondents from Northern Europe. 
Obviously, uh, this is uh, quite fueled, let's say, by uh, what's happening in Ukraine right now, because uh, the, la the vast majority of the respondents have actually seen uh, that the war in Ukraine would have a negative impact on the European Green Deal implementation on the short term. So what do we mean by the short term? We mean over the 12, I mean, by the tw in the tw coming 12 months. Uh, and it's 73% of the respondents that have actually uh, seen that see the war in Ukraine as having a potential negative impact on the Green Deal implementation over the 12 months to come. Uh, yes. But, uh, however, if we look at the longer term, and this is where maybe the experts would share the optimism of uh, Didek Samson, respondents are slightly more confident, and the number of skeptics goes down to 42%. So we move from 73% thinking that on the short term the war would have negative impacts to 42% on the long term. And only 5% actually think that the EU institutions will not support the European Green Deal after the 2024 European elections. So that is quite interesting. While six out of 10 believe that the European institutions will actually keep the European Green Deal project after the European elections, in particular the European Commission. And we heard that commitment from, uh, from Diedrich Samson himself. So um, what is seen as the, uh, let's say, the main problem to uh, the implementation of the European Green Deal by the uh, experts? Well, like last year, actually, it's more or less the same figures. Last, last year it was 33% and this year 35%. It is the lack of commitment by member states to the European Green Deal agenda. And it's interesting to see that if we look at where it sits, that in Western Europe it is actually rating at 43%. And in Eastern Europe, it's 44% of the expert thinking that the lack of commitment by member states uh, to the Green Deal agenda is a problem. Afterwards, after that, you have the lack of consensus in Europe about what constitutes sustainability, so the economic, the social, and the environmental components, and where the trade-offs are. And uh, the third uh, barrier to the implementation of the European Green Deal is seen as the lack of policy consistency, consistency, consistency sorry, it's hard for a French speaker, uh, across the European Green Deal. And uh, to name one that is uh, not very coherent, let's say, with the European Green Deal objectives, the elephant in the room, the common agricultural policy. Uh, so if we look at the member states that are seen as the champions uh, of the European Green Deal, uh, actually it's interesting to see that there were slight changes in comparison with last year. We have the same top three, but Germany has lost its first position. And Sweden is now uh, rating first, so as you can see, followed by Denmark and then Germany. So that is an interesting reflection, I think, also to have in the discussion uh, uh, later on. And if we look, it's not on the slide here, but who are, which member states are seen as the least committed to the European Green Deal implementation? You have Hungary first, Poland, and then Romania. And actually, Romania is new in the top three being least, least commuted. Last year, it was uh, Bulgaria. Um, it is also interesting because we're going to have representatives from Czechia later on. Uh, just to look very briefly at what the case study in Czechia was saying, um, Czechia does not appear in the top three, as you can see, of the least committed. But actually, in the case study, 62% of the respondents see that the national government is not committed to the European Green Deal agenda. That is quite, uh, I think, an important uh, result in view of the upcoming uh, presidency. Uh, Spain, on the contrary, is seen as being very committed, and the same number, 62%, is seeing the national government as being very committed to the European Green Deal agenda. But, and there is a strong but here, uh, experts seem to be concerned and worried about the upcoming elections in Spain in 2023, uh, and they see that by more than half of them as a potential risk for the country to be less committed to the European Green Deal agenda. So again, that is, I think, interesting results also for the discussions later on. Um, 
that is also a, a very important uh, uh, result, we think. Uh, half of the experts believe that the social provisions are essential and will significant, significantly facilitate the implementation of the European Green Deal. And actually, if you look at the pie chart, it's 90% of them who believe that it plays a role. And last but not least, uh, where should the top priorities uh, of the Commission uh, uh, focus on? And uh, I'm glad to uh, have heard uh, Diedrich Samson saying that uh, uh, the work from the European Commission is to step up now on the farm to fork and also on the biodiversity and nature restoration awesome. law, because this is really where, as you can see in this table, uh, the uh, efforts should be increased, a uh, healthy food system for people and planet but also preserving uh, our environments. And actually, uh, if you look at the uh, uh, results more in detail, only 17%, that is very low, of the respondents mm -hmm. believe that what has been done so far on healthy foods no, for see, people I and a, planet I have a video signal, but I don't have a sound anymore. what science requires. I'm trying not to be disturbed by someone else speaking at the same time, but uh, I did, okay, I don't know if uh, he wants to come in, but I'm almost, I'm almost finished. Um, this is and uh, most likely fueled, as I was saying before, uh, by the poor results of the reform uh, of the common agricultural policy that has just happened, and also what experts have seen in the CAP strategic plans uh, that have been drafted by national governments and that are now being uh, evaluated uh, by the European Commission. And uh, with that, uh, I'm happy to uh, uh, finish. And uh, thanks a lot for your attention. And uh, stay tuned for the uh, publication of the full reports uh, in September of the results of the barometer and the policy recommendations. Thank you.